Hello, I'm Nasha Levinsky and you're watching Break the Fake. They make them, we break them and tell you everything you need to know. Now, let's talk about the family-friendly atmosphere of North Korea, where Take Your Daughter to Work Day isn't just a cute annual event, but apparently a full-time job. Yes, Kim Jong-un, North Korea's own eternal heartthrob, has been showing his daughter Kim Joo-ae the ropes of running the Hermit Kingdom, because nothing says father-daughter bonding like military parades and nuclear tests. Now at this point, North Korea isn't just a country, it's a dynasty. We're talking four generations deep. It's like the Kardashians, but with more missile launches and less Instagram. Kim Joo Air has been seen shaking hands with generals and officials, because why play and go to class when you can just pal around with an autocrat's best friends, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, Kim Jong-un might be shopping for more than just military accolades abroad. Reports suggest he's in dire need of medication for conditions brought on by being, well, a dictator with a high-stress lifestyle and a penchant for cheese. High blood pressure, diabetes, you name it, he's probably got it. And when you're teetering on the edge of various health crises, why not groom your elementary school-aged daughter to take over someday? And let's not forget the broader picture here, where we have Putin in Russia, another leader with a nostalgia for imperial past, torn between playing Tsar and Soviet secretary. It seems like both of these leaders could use a lesson or two on modern governance that doesn't involve reviving Cold War aesthetics or turning family trees into government flowcharts. So, as Kim Jong-un prepares his daughter for possibly the world's toughest inheritance, Let's all take a moment or two to appreciate that no matter how bizarre our own family gatherings can get sometimes, at least they don't involve discussing nuclear launch codes. Now let's dive into the whimsical world of Russia, where even cartoon characters aren't safe from the national pastime, namely vodka and brawling. That's right. In a scene that sounds like it's straight out of a fever dream, or maybe just a regular Tuesday in Russia, mascots from beloved Russian cartoons decided to throw down in the streets. Cheburashka, the adorable creature from a fan-favorite children's TV series, was reportedly seen brawling, wait for it, with a fuel canister. Because when you run out of actual people to argue with, why not pick a fight with inanimate objects? Except in Russia, fuel canisters can fight back for some reason. Now, this isn't just any street fight, mind. It's a metaphorical gold mine. Imagine the icons of childhood innocence now embodying the adult reality of modern Russia. Vodka in one hand, existential despair in the other. Cartoon characters doing a literal mortal combat reenactment in the streets. Shame we couldn't see if they have any special moves or fatalities. But hey, that's the contrast between East and West to you. On X, formerly known as Twitter, there are NAFO cartoon dogs. It's a ground, uh, grassroots movement, basically, fighting Russian disinformation, right? Pretty awesome stuff. Now, they are pummeling Russian propagandists in the comments section. No violence, but lots and lots of verbal mayhem. Meanwhile, in Russia, the frustration of societal decay needs to be vented in the most visceral way possible. Don't believe me? Well, take a look at this. <laughs> yeah, a fuel canister. I mean, probably this could be a metaphor also for perhaps the economic crisis, like Russia depending on fuels, but also the attacks on Russian refineries by the Ukrainians, which undermine this, about why Cheburashka decided to join the fight, I really don't know. And amidst all this chaos, you've got your average Russian citizens witnessing these brawls between what should be beloved figures of their childhood, thinking it's just another day in paradise. Just look at this next clip of an interesting 
conversation coming up. This casual exchange of a medication feels like someone bartering over the last shot of vodka at a wedding. And it really captures the spirit of the nation. So here is to Russia, where even mascots need a stiff drink and maybe a therapy session or two. And when, if you want to go to a pharmacy, you actually need a firearm. When your fictional characters start mimicking the evening news, you might want to reconsider which stories you're telling at bedtime. If you need a firearm for such simple things as doing your groceries, it probably means that the chaos factor in your country has just been dialed up to 11, and there is no signs of this abating anytime soon. Now, let's take a quick trip to Venezuela for a chance, where the local political landscape resembles a UFC fight, but with less sportsmanship and more tear gas. Yes, amidst the crumbling facade of what they're calling a democracy, it turns out Venezuela's faithful ally in the fight against the democratic world, namely Russia, is watching their body have a bit of a meltdown. So, Nicolas Maduro, the man who could give a masterclass on how to cling to power with the tenacity of a cat refusing to get off your laptop, has been re-elected. And by re-elected, we mean he somehow convinced 31% of the people. Officially, it's 51.2%, because, you know, math is flexible in Venezuela. That he is still the right man for a job that no one seems to want. Now, the opposition, displaying shocking levels of optimism, claimed their guy got 65% of the vote. Surprise! The protests went on peacefully until, as tradition dictates, the police turned up with their party favours. Tear gas and rubber bullets. Because nothing says legitimate government quite like making it rain eye irritants and pain in the streets. I think even Lukashenko is watching this and feeling a bit envious. Venezuelan authorities, ever the comedians, insist these protests were not peaceful. A claim backed up by the dozens of military and police injuries. Because apparently in Venezuela, peaceful is now defined as whatever doesn't embarrass the government too much. Maduro, in a delightful twist of paranoia, has accused protesters of being drug-fueled, US-funded revolutionaries. It's always the US, isn't it? If you're going to blame a foreign power, at least be creative. Blame, I don't know, Canada, maybe. Those guys are always up to something with their politeness and maple syrup. So, as Venezuela descends deeper into the chaos that Maduro calls governance, and Russia sends them a thumbs up from across the ocean, remember one thing. In the world of authoritarian regimes, Venezuela is currently bidding to be the next top disaster. Keep it up, guys. You're doing great. Well, not great, great, but you know, dictator great. And with this, we conclude this episode of Break the Fake. Please stay with us here on TVP World for more latest news and updates.